As promised, one-on-one, -on -one, Tyler Algier. He is positioning to potentially be the number one running back along with Lopini Katoa for BYU football. Is it going to be another committee approach? And why does he feel ready for the additional spotlight? Here's that interview. BYU running back Tyler Algier with us on BYU Sports Nation. Tyler, welcome to the Zoom edition of BYUSN. How's life a week and a half away from BYU at Navy, man? You know, I was excited. I'm excited, man. The Tulsa team's excited. We're getting our minds right just to beat Navy, so it's good. It's going to be a unique experience running out into that stadium knowing that there are no fans involved, but what kind of emotions do you think you're going to experience as we approach this unique 2020 situation with no fans and you know honestly like yeah we love our fans but you know it's just we just got to get our minds right that our teams are only fan now so that's all we gotta that's all we gotta worry about especially in that type of environment but I know there's gonna be millions of fans out there watching us so it should be fun you're trying to create energy in these practices these live sessions at LaBelle Edwards Stadium when there are no fans so how do you do that and hopefully translate that to when you're playing an actual game you know, honestly, it's just it's just bringing the juice. Like once the O line brings the juice, and everyone else wants to bring the juice. Or we'll start with the defense, just bringing the juice, and then everyone else will get hyped. So you know, it's just like we just feed off everyone's energy, and then that's how we get it on. And you mentioned that a lot of eyeballs are going to be watching ESPN Monday Night Football, the A broadcast team of Reese Davis and Kirk Herbstreit calling your BYU game. What does that make you feel when you think about the spotlight that BYU is stepping into? You know, it's going to be exciting, especially because everyone's watching. But, you know, we just got to get our minds right, kind of just isolate isolate all of that and just just get our minds right just to be Navy. So, I know there's a ton of emphasis on, hey, we got to stay healthy. we got to do everything we can to stay within our team bubble and be ready to play when that opportunity happens. So what are the testing protocols like right now for BYU football? You know, right now we're – we're doing uh, three tests a week. We already gone through two of them. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we're going three tests a week and uh, it's a saliva based, saliva based. So we're all getting tested and going through that. So again, make sure everyone's healthy and just going through there. How has that been? Are you feeling encouraged by uh, the collective results and how that could impact the season? Oh no, for sure, yeah. Just everyone, everyone's doing, everyone's doing what they, what they should be doing. Keeping our mask on when keeping social distancing, keeping our six feet apart. So everyone's doing well with that. So especially with eating, that's the main emphasis because everyone wants to sit next to each other, but we just got to social distance and uh, just focus on the team right now. Cause that's how, that's how we get it done. Tyler Algier with us on BYU Sports Nation. Tyler, obviously at the professional level, some significant things are happening. NBA playoff games are being boycotted. Major League Baseball games are being boycotted and things are being postponed. How have you handled all of that as you try and stay focused on college football and what's to come in essentially a week and a half? You know, there's just a lot of social injustices out there, but right now we're just, or especially me, I'm just trying to just focus on, just focus on right now what I can do, what I can do and just focus on what's happening right now at BYU. So just focusing on myself right now, trying to isolate all of that. Obviously you're still going to think about it, but you know, just got to isolate, get my mind right for football because we got a game next week. So it should be fine. How would you wrap up the mentality of the team right now, given everything that is happening with the pandemic and social injustice and trying to get ready to play this football season and starting school? What, what's the mentality of the team collectively like right now? Honestly, we're just, we're just ready to play. I, who who would have thought we would have been able to get as many games as we can, especially with the pandemic and all that, but you know, we're, we're just excited to play, you know, school's starting up. So uh, we just got to just keep social distancing, do what we can to help our team. And then it should be fun right after that. Yeah, I can see the excitement exuding off of your face, your body language, you're ready to go out and play football. What do you so, think of the eight games that are officially scheduled right now with the most recent additions of Texas State and UT San Antonio? It should be fun games. It should be fun games. I'm excited. Just, just grateful enough that uh, Tom Homo and all the athletic staff can just – get as many games as we can. You know, we're ready to play anyone, anyone, whoever gets on the schedule. So it should be good. Are you ready to slip any ideas into Tom Homo's office? Are, are, are you like, hey, I've noticed this team's available. Or, are, are you at that point or are you just kind of like leaving it to them? Honestly, they're 50-50, 50, 50, 50, 50 <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll just leave it up to them because now we, we trust them that they'll do what, what they can just uh, give, a, give us whatever, 
whoever we can get. So many of your coaches and your teammates have been very complimentary of you this fall camp and your uh, excellent performance. Uh, why has this fall camp been such a boost for you and your game? Shoot, you know, just coming back from linebacker, from switching from linebacker and then switching back, you know, and then uh, receiving my, just giving the scholarship after Hawaii. It was just, uh, they wanted me at running back. They said, hey, we want you to stay at, stay at running back. So, you know, I really honed in on those, on the techniques and just focused up on every, all the plays and just really just, uh, really just bought out. Really is just, just trying to be the best I can be. Just, uh, just, uh, just for, be just for the better, better of the team, really. Special teams are not just, uh, just ball out, really. And Tyler, you mentioned bouncing around from positions and on opposite sides of the ball, no less. At what point did it start to click for you at running back? Was there a moment or a game or a situation where you're like, I can do this. I can be a good running back at BYU. Mm. Honestly, I'm not sure. Honestly, I would say that that week that I came back, that they switched me back to running back, uh, who do we play? UMass? Yeah, UMass. It was UMass. It was just uh, just getting back into that field, just being back in the running back room, like, hey, you're not with the defense anymore. Get your mind right to run the rock. So, you know, so right after that, that's when I knew, uh, yeah, this, yeah. This, might, this might be where I'm at. Hard not to feel that when you're running away from four different defenders into the end zone, right? No, for sure. <laughs> where do you feel like you've improved the most as a running back and with Harvey Unga as uh, uh, your running backs coach? It was great to have Harvey, Harvey in there, especially with his insight and all that. But what I improved on, I would say, is my speed, just technique-wise, blocking, and just being an all-around bag. That's really what I'm really focusing on. Where do you stack up in the conversation of fastest BYU running back right now if you've been working on your speed? Mm. I'll say I'll, I'll say I'm up there. I'll say I'm up there, I guess, but <laughs> no, we'll, see, we'll see what happens. What happens when we, when we see it on the field? So I'll let, you good guys answer. Leave, I'll let you guys leave it up to that. Yeah, don't surrender the number one spot yet. Let's prove it on yeah. the field, right? Come on. Yes, sir. What kind of role do you expect to play for this BYU offense this year, uh, along with uh, Lopini Katoa and maybe Jackson McChesney, among others? You know, we got a we got a very big, very big back. We got a lot of a lot of talent in the running back room. So you know, we all we're all trying to do the same. All try to be all around backs wherever wherever they need us, we'll do it. So you know, we're just we're just there for the team. How is your role both similar and different to let's say Lopini Katoa? Uh, you guys are have been the most talked about running backs in camp. So how are you similar and different from each other? Hmm. Lopini's really good, uh, really good with his vision. So I'm really trying to catch up to that. I'm really trying to catch up to that. And, uh, you know, everyone's, everyone's been working. Everyone's been working on that. So, you know, we're all really, we're all really, we're all really similar in different, in different ways. But, you know, I can't really, can't really think about that right now. If you are given the reins as, you know, the go-to running back, why do you feel like you're ready for that spotlight and that opportunity? Sure. If when the time comes, uh, I would say it's just been working, working all off season, working hard. You know, just uh, who would have thought we would have been playing Navy, or who would have thought we would have been having a season? But you know, just always just kept my mind right and just stayed humble. You know, just uh, and just thankful to God that He's put me here in this position that I can just do what I can do and just every day just practice the best of my ability. So just doing that. What's the running backs room like? Personality-wise, uh, explain to us what it, what a typical meeting is like in that room. Well, we got goofballs in there, man. Especially Javel Brown. Uh, all of us, all, all of us are goofballs. But when it's time to get serious, we'll we'll get serious. But it's fun. It's fun in the one running back room. A lot of good guys in there. Why do you feel like this BYU football offense will not just be able to move the ball, which you did collectively as a unit successfully last year, but really kind of struggled in the red zone. Why do you feel like things will be better and different in the red zone this year? You know, we've been really emphasizing it. Coach Grimes has been on us just like, you know, third, like our red zone wasn't really that good. It was decent, but you know, 
we really need to emphasize it. So we really took that to heart. The whole offense did, quarter, starting from the O-line, quarterbacks, receivers, and then the running back room. We really just emphasize, hey, once we get in here, it's our zone. It's our zone, and we're going to score. And what has your offensive line done to help you feel better about running the ball successfully this season? You know, we got a lot of new schemes and all that, and all that, and they've been really honing in on all of it. So they've been really moving, really moving the, moving the defense. So either practice squad or number ones. But, you know, it's, uh, it's fun for them to do that. And uh, just running behind them is just, it's just fun. Is there somebody that you particularly like to lock pads with on the defensive side? If so, who is that person? Mm. I would say, I'll say Isaiah Kafusi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. You he's, see he's a tough up cat. And For Isaiah's sure. there and you're like, yeah, bring it on, man. Okay. Okay. I can, I can respect that because uh, you're right. He is a tough guy. Uh, Tyler, it's great to catch up with you, man. Um, we wish you continued success and health through the rest of fall camp. Let's give you some BYU Sports Nation karma. Typically, uh, that turns into good things for you. So take that, use it, and uh, can't wait to see you on the field against Navy. Thanks, man. Hey, thank you. Really appreciate it. Tyler Algier on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how.